I just did it. And I did it in opening my belief, business, believing that people will come and, and my services are needed. Okay. So I, I don't look at it as a challenge. Welcome back to the Let's Evolve for Tomorrow podcast. I'm your host, Tyrone, and we help aspiring new and existing entrepreneurs by meeting them where they are and helping them grow to where they want to be. And we do that by inviting seasoned entrepreneurs to the podcast that can give golden nuggets and gems on how to overcome challenges, what to do next, next steps, and how to grow. So without further ado, we have a very special guest with us, SP Payroll and Tax Services. How are you today, Stacey? Good. How are you doing today? Good. So if you don't mind, if you could just introduce yourself and just give us a little background. Hi, my name is Stacey Poole. Uh, I've been in the accounting field for about 15 years, 15 plus years. Um, I moved here. I'm originally from Warren, Ohio, 45 minutes north of Cleveland, Ohio, and I moved to Columbus, Ohio. And I was living in Columbus and working in Westerville, Ohio. Um, and so I went to H&R Block and got my taxes done. And I ended up owing the city of Westerville. And um, I said, and the lady told me, she said, well, if you would have had 15 more dollars withheld, extra you wouldn't have owed. I said, well, why didn't somebody tell me that? That following year, I went to H&R Block's tax school, and I've been doing taxes <laughs> since. So that was part of the reason that pushed me to doing taxes, because I felt somebody should have educated me back then. Mm-hmm. And that was my whole goal, to and starting SP Payroll Tax Services is educating somebody who, who wouldn't give up an extra $15 a pay not to owe with penalties and interest at the end of the year. Exactly. So I know you said that that was part of the reason you started the, your tax service. What was the other reason? My other reason was to educate and to provide affordable tax preparation because a lot of people gouge to me. And also, I'm an honest tax preparer. So when you, you say know, gouge, what do you mean by that? Um, pricing wise. Okay. Um, the code of ethics, the circular 203, that's what the IRS has. Mm-hmm. When someone is doing your taxes, and I tell all my clients, but you, if a tax preparer doesn't sign, that's a red flag. Mm-hmm. Um, if somebody doing your taxes, they don't have an EIN. That's a red flag. Um, If they charge you one amount and they charge somebody else another amount, that's a red flag. Um, It's a lot of self-prepared tax software out there. And you flip over the the second page on your 1040 and look at the bottom. If it says self-prepared, that means they don't have an EFIN number to electronically file your number. So they're... They're taking on your identity and doing your taxes on the self-prepared tax software. Oh, wow. Yeah, so when you, somebody do your taxes, and I tell people, so on that 1040, look at that second page at the bottom. It should have the business name, the address, their EIN number, their phone number, and their P10. Mm-hmm. It, it always start with a P, and I, we got pay for our P10. If it don't have those on there, you should be real Larry. <laughs> okay. You know. So, and that's that's great detail. So, let me ask you this. Do you actually help with filing business taxes? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, before we get there, I, I do have a question. So, you've been in business for, what, 20 years now? Um, 2007. So, 16. 16 I'm years? A, yeah, I'm going on 20. Yeah, 16 wow. years. 16 yeah. years. That's a long time. So, you went into a a tax company to prepare your taxes and you said, Hey, I wish somebody would have told me that I owe this extra $15. You decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to educate myself. You went to tax school or went to take the class, became certified. 
So at that point, did you just jump right into your business or were you working for another company prior to starting your business? I went to I worked for H&R Block for two years. OK. After I came out to tax school and um, I worked for him for two years uh, uh, to pay off my car. OK. <laughs> and um, and then in doing so, um, I, I didn't have the freedom to be Stacy in H&R Block. Mm -hmm. But with my business, I have that freedom. Right. And I love that. And that's the other reason I had one thing that inspired me to open my business. I said, this is my last season with H&R Block. Mm -hmm. um, this young lady came in and I did her taxes and she had a, a kid. Uh -huh. She didn't work that much. Um, she got back nine hundred and something dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, and I remember this. She got back nine hundred and something dollars. She wanted it to come rapid. Uh huh. And after H and R block fee, the rapid, she got three hundred dollars. Wow. I was like, come on now, you know. But but that's what they were built off of. Okay. You know, and a lot of people, um, they want their money yesterday. Mm hmm. But. Come on now. Right. You know, I said, I can't keep doing this. You yeah. know, so and that so that following year, that next year, I went out on my own. So as of right now, right, so we'll just start from where you are now and just kind of back into the story. How many clients do you have right now? I'm dealing with 250 plus. Wow. So you're very established. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very established, very seasoned, and you know exactly what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So I guess my, my next question is, what are some of like some of the milestones that you hit when it came to starting your tax service? Some of the challenges that you faced when you first started, like, did you just open the doors and people started flooding in or how did that work? No, um, it was the, the referrals. I had a lot of referrals and um, I thank everybody for trusting me and entrusting me with their tax information mm -hmm. you know so and i tell everybody i don't do anything on your return that i wouldn't do on my own okay um i don't believe in sitting on returns or anything and from there it just one thing just led to another i did um early in my business i did ads in the messenger in the west side messenger okay um that was it early. I, I did, I can say in the West Side Messenger, I did it early. Mm -hmm. And, um, but most was referrals, to be honest. Okay. So your first, let's say your first 10 customers were the first 10 referrals? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they were referrals. Oh, somebody, and I get texts now, such and such, you know, and I do taxes in all 50 states. So... I get emails and through COVID and all this, um, I've been Zooming and Google uh, team meetings I've been having. Okay. You know, meeting people, but I do all 50 states. Wow. So this is not in Ohio. I got clients in Texas, Florida. I got quite a few in Florida. Okay. And um, South Carolina. So how did all of these people hear about your services? You're here in Columbus, but you have clients across the country. How how did that happen? Because they're, I did their cousins, their friends, their mothers, their brothers, you know, and it's sad to say some of them had bad experience with tax repairs and now they're entrusting me. So I have to build that trust with them. Mm hmm you know, and um, so every time I get a new client, you know, you got to build their trust and period. Mm -hmm. you, you have to build it. OK, so what are some of the key challenges you had to overcome when you first started your business? I say, um, I, you know, I just did it. I, I don't even think I looked at it as a challenge. OK, to be honest, I just did it. 
And I did it in opening my belief business, believing that people will come okay. and, and my services are needed. Okay. So I, I don't look at it as a challenge. So no challenges at all. Because I know we were talking before and you mm -hmm. said that you're um, so you also sell insurance, right? You're licensed mm -hmm. to sell insurance. So there's a slow season that comes with tax season, correct? Mm -hmm. So right. during that slow season, what do you do at that point? I, I do provide a payroll service. Okay. So I got a payroll. So I, yeah, I have that too. Um, and now my life insurance, that's where I got the balance to add in and throw that in there. Okay. So I'm trying to streamline the life insurance and health insurance during this time mm -hmm. because this is the time that everybody's looking for it. Okay. And that it's open enrollment. And if you want to change your insurance, this is the time. Okay. And um, I, everybody needs it. Right. Everybody needs health insurance. Everybody needs life insurance. So you said right now is the time. Why is that? Is it the time of the year? Outside of open enrollment, I guess I'm trying to figure out how does open enrollment play a role in someone seeking a different type of life insurance. Like me, if I just come to you, regular person off the street and say, you know, hey, Stacy, I need some health insurance. Why is that? Because that's the how health insurance is now. And you can, during open enrollment, you can change. But outside of open enrollment, you got to have a reason. Okay. You got to have another kid. Right. <laughs> you know, or you change residence okay. location. So that's why doing open enrollment, that's the time for you to do it. But outside of open enrollment with mm -hmm. insurance, you got to have a special reason for you to get that insurance. Okay. You know, like your insurance probably dropped you. Right. You got 30 days. So that's a special reason. Uh, okay. So that's why this is the time and everybody look and change. They may had a different medication and, they're not covering it. They may want to change that. They may want to switch doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, they may want to switch hospitals or they have been in a different area and just waited till open enrollment to make some changes. So can business owners also apply or receive this health insurance? Is there a set package or a certain package for them for entrepreneurs or small business owners? Yeah, they have things for small businesses. Okay. Do you offer so, healthcare packages for small businesses? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's a whole thing set up um, depending on how many employees you have. Mm. That's how they look at it. Okay. How many employees you have. But everything now, to be honest, they change so much. And you go to the marketplace now, the premiums are like $0 with all these insurers now. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. With us, you know, yeah, with the health insurance part. Okay. It's like zero dollars on so the marketplace. Is there only one insurance company that you use or that you partner with or are there multiple? I try to partner with multiple because I believe in getting more than one quote. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's how I am. And I believe passing the same thing on to my clients. Right. You know, even... Stuff I get done with my home. No, I need more than one quote. Mm -hmm. And I'm a numbers person. Right. So. How did you get into payroll? So I, I, we know the story behind how you got into the taxes, but where did payroll come from? I've been doing, I worked for Shelly Company for 10 years. Shelly? Yeah. Okay. They're a construction company. Ah, okay. And um, no, I did payroll at Team 2002. Okay. They're a staffing company. That's where I first started at, at a staffing company mm -hmm. doing payroll. And um, they got paid today. You work today, get paid today. One of those. And then the weekly payroll. Okay. Uh, excuse me. I've been doing payroll for others, you know, and I just love, you know, it's a deadline driven, you know, I meet deadlines, boom, boom, <laughs> you know, and um, I love it. I just love it. I said, and that's why I had to payroll. Mm. 
Then when I start working for Shelly, I started doing payroll for them. Okay. So. So one is because, so the tax side, just to make sure I'm clear, the tax part came from an experience you had with no one educating you on that $15 tax. So you said, you know what? I'm going to go back to school and learn this myself so I can teach other people. And then the payroll side really came from experience and passion. Mm, pretty uh, much. Okay, so you just pretty much combined the two. I combined the two. Okay. And all the accounting that I've done, and I did accounts payable, paying mm -hmm. vendors. So I learned to set up vendors, the W-9, the EINs. I learned all that. Okay. And so I put that into practice in my own business. So what sets you apart? Like anyone can go online and look up payroll and tax service. What sets you apart from all of these other companies in Columbus, you know, to say, you know what, we need to go to SP payroll and tax over the other tax preparers and payroll services? Because they can get a hold of me beyond April the 15th. <laughs> okay. You're laughing, right? Right. And I'm serious. Oh, no, that's valid. That's because valid. you don't, what other tax place do you see open right now? None. It's by appointment only if you do, I think. You don't see, you can't even get a hold of them. That's see, true. but when you call SP Payroll and Tax Services, you're going to talk to me. Okay. You may leave a message somewhere else mm -hmm. and they may call you back. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But. You're not going to see them. Right. I'm a, you're going to start seeing them in December. Okay. But you're going to see me all year round. Why is that? And, and I'm accessible like that. My clients can call. My clients call me if they want to withdraw from their 401k. Okay. And I encourage them to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, with their exemptions. Um with life changes, people, uh, kids going to college, mm -hmm. you need educated in all those areas that affect your taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, and I tell people, and I learned that early on in my business, and the next year they would come to me. I said, what the heck? I said, why didn't you call me? Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean that. Call me. I don't want to get a surprise 1099R because mm -hmm. you withdrew from your 401k yeah you had to do it that's but it's a way to do it it's your money mm -hmm. and i tell people don't be scared in how they put it at you to withdraw from your 401k that's your money mm -hmm. just know the proper way to withdraw that's your money mm -hmm. but they they make you scared Say, oh no, 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 no. It's it's a way to do it. Okay. You know, and that's where I step in. And my client, no, okay, tell me this. But and I, they answer all my questions. And I tell them what to do. So do you charge for that, for that consultation? No. Okay. So really it's okay, hey, you're a steady client. You come to me every right. year. I prepare your taxes. I'm not just available on the day that you come in and I file your taxes for you, but I'm also available throughout the year. So when you are doing transactions that are tax related, then you can still come to me so I can tell you the correct way to do it. Is that mm -hmm. right? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why do you stay open past April 15th beyond that? Is there any other reason for that or that's it? I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah, I need to be accessible okay. and things happen. And to be honest, I'm really... In my office to like May, June. Okay. Number one, it's a bunch of procrastinators. Okay. <laughs> Everybody don't like taxes like me, and mm -hmm. I know that. Right. So you have to be available for those procrastinators mm -hmm. that go, oh, wait. A I, and I just say, okay. Okay. You know, so that's my reason. So what do you feel would be the best way for a business to prepare when it comes to filing their taxes, because some people just started their business this year. Some are, uh, what do you call it? Some are sole proprietors. Some have an LLC. Some have an S Corp or a C Corp. So what would you suggest to people when it comes to filing their taxes, the documents that they need to have together before they come to see you at SP Payroll and Tax Services or any other tax preparer? They need to have all their documentation together. Okay. If all your expenses and your income. Okay. Because really when a person 
starts a business, your startup expenses in that tax year is going to be your most expenses. You're going you're gonna to have the biggest loss them first couple of years, to be honest. Uh-huh. You know, and keep track of that. Okay. You know, the goal is not to always be at a loss. Mm-hmm. People don't understand that. No, that's not the goal. But them first couple of years, then the IRS is going to be looking for you to have a profit. Okay. So the first two years, three years, four yeah, years? Yeah, something like that. Okay. But, you know, things shifted with COVID, mm-hmm. with taxes right. and businesses. So, you know, this, even the ones that was established since COVID seen drops these last couple of years. So, you know, but even but when you're dealing with startup costs, even when I started my business, um, I think I spent about $4,000. Mm-hmm. I think I spent about four thousand. So when you say to bring their documents or have the documents prepared, how do you suggest they track their expenses and their income? Like, what's the best method? Everybody, te- they pretty much are told QuickBooks, QuickBooks. Mm-hmm. But they have so many other inexpensive bookkeeping softwares out there. Okay, and I suggest you try them and. Put in your debits and your credits and get the understanding. Even if you think it don't matter, put it down. So define debits and credits for those who may not be familiar with those terms. Like your debits is your expenses, anything you spend your money on. Mm-hmm. And the credits is pretty much is, is your income. Okay. And dealing with a business too, you want to keep track of your business miles. So I encourage everybody with all the technology we have, download one of those mileage apps. Okay. And keep track of your business miles. And when you're dealing with taxes in the IRS and business, the IRS look at it as anything ordinary and necessary for you to run your business as an expense. Mm-hmm. So Tyrone, you could not buy any oil. Mm-hmm. And say, oh, I'm going to put this on my taxes. I needed this oil for my car. (laughs) No, 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 no. Okay. We do oil, you know, it's not ordinary or necessary. Okay. So if it's ordinary and necessary for you to run your business, Mm -hmm. then that's an expense, you know. So what software, what are some of the free softwares out there someone can use to track their debits and credits and also their mileage? If you if you can think of any of it, I'd use Owl O W L software okay. for um, a bookkeeping software. Okay, and you buy it one time. Okay, I think it when I bought it, it was like fifty sixty dollars, and you buy it one time. Okay, and you can use it forever. Is you it can like use an it for annual fee or no no well, annual fee. Wow. Okay, and um, I don't know any apps with the mileage but that's one way to really keep track is with the mileage so when you say track business mileage what do you what do you mean by that so i deliver i do this mechanics taxes okay so i delivered his taxes to his place a business those are business miles for me Mm -hmm. and why is that important to track your mileage Mileage is money. Okay. That's the plainest way I can put it. (laughs) Mileage is money. Okay. And people don't understand that. But when you do taxes and what's on the tax software is, is this mileage written? So you as a taxpayer, you should have a written. And I tell everybody that. Do you got a written? I need whatever you told me. It need to make sense. You know, if it doesn't make sense to me, Uh it's not going to make sense to them. Okay. And I can't bat for you. Okay. You know? Right. But it has to be written in case you get audited. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, mileage is money. Believe you me, mileage is money. So when people are tracking expenses, is it, do you have to keep receipts? Or just write down the amount of the transaction, itemize it, you know, and what you spent it on. What you spend it on. How do you yeah. itemize it? And you, most stuff is so electronic. Yeah, you should have the receipts mm-hmm. just in case of audit. 
Okay. They need to know where this fifty dollars came from. Okay. You know, and the reason for it. But stuff is so everything electronic, mm -hmm. you know, and it's easy to look back on stuff now and and get more stuff. Uh huh. But you still need to. That's why in my software, when I do my bookkeeping. In all the years I've been doing it, they just pop down and everything on there. You know, some suppliers or some stuff I've switched and changed. But for the most part, it's stay on the same thing. So that's why it would be important to get a business credit card. That's an easy way to do it, too. If you use that credit card just for that, boom. You know, but at the beginning, you may not be able to use a business credit card. Mm -hmm. You can just use a regular credit card and just try to just use that credit card till you build up your business sense about it. Because the business doing SP payroll and tax services and what I do, mm -hmm. you got to have good credit. They, The bank I partner with runs my credit every year. So I couldn't do what I do if I wasn't responsible. Mm, okay. So th they're going to do that. They're mm -hmm. going to run your credit score and see, you know, so you, you got to do that on the business part and, and, and build that part of it up. Okay. So in terms of, um, I'm just thinking about, I was thinking about documentation. So when they come to prepare their taxes, you need to make, they need to make sure that they have their credits and debits and track their mileage is there anything else that they need to bring with them when they're filing their taxes anything at, else at the beginning if this is their first year mm -hmm. um you need the name of their business ask for their ein number okay. some people have them some people don't no big deal but by the time you leave my office you will have your <laughs> ein okay um and i ask them what they do what service they provide whatever mm -hmm. And your business start date, that is so important. Your business start date, when did you start? Mm -hmm. And and then I go in, did you make anything? Usually that first year, it may be a little bit of money, mm -hmm. but it's more expenses. You know, they had to buy this equipment. They had to, oh, oh, you had to do that. Boom, boom, boom. So I ask questions to trigger something that they thought wasn't relevant right oh 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 i said that's exactly what i wanted to do do and i just go through the whole thing and and ask them about their mileage and just have all those forms together and if you did any contracting work they should have 1099s mm -hmm. some may be leaving a w-2 job they may have a w-2 and a 1099 so i try to cover as much as i can in my interview when i interview somebody doing their taxes pretty much okay that's what i was going to ask you so in terms of write-offs right i think some people when they're filing taxes taxes especially that first year they don't know what they can and what they can't write off so kind of i guess you could say high level what are the top maybe five to seven things that someone can write off that a lot of people don't know about like square footage in their home if they have a home office to your point, mileage. Yeah, and when you're dealing with the the home office and it's you're dealing with the square footage, the utilities, you need to know them utilities all year. Um any improvements you did around that, you know, in that area, it, it counts your whole house though. Um you really it got to be over 300 mile, or 300 square footage to even get on your taxes. Mm. Okay. It has to be over 300 square footage to even get on there. Okay. And then I go down the line. So you're in your office, but you need internet, mm -hmm. a desk, mm -hmm. a filing cabinet. Did you buy new chairs? You buy a printer? Mm -hmm. What software you use? I ask all those questions. Mm -hmm. So how do you get started? So what, what you got to do? So I'm looking at your profession. Then I'm looking at, oh, did you buy another camera? Mm -hmm. Did you buy a recorder? Mm -hmm. Did you buy editing software? Mm -hmm. So I'll go down the line. Mm -hmm. 
and say, oh, you know, just think back. Because when you're doing taxes, you just got to think back to that year. And people love to go, oh, I bought this yesterday. No, 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 no. <laughs> just stay in 2022. <laughs> don't don't come up to now. Stay in 2022. So and you got to be in control of the whole conversation because they'll they'll give you everything. No, no, no. Just stop. You know. So what are some of the challenges you've seen when it comes to doing taxes for an entrepreneur or a small business owner? Like some of the things that you would say to our listeners to say, hey, if you're com- if you're going to file your taxes, don't do these things, but make sure you do these things. They, um, everybody, they listen to somebody else. Okay. They listen to somebody else. Um, I just had to deal with a guy here in June. He has his own business. Mm-hmm. And um, he's, a, he's a contractor who's subcontracting. Ah. Uh-huh. So he, before he came to me. Uh-huh. Somebody told him he need to put this guy on payroll. Mm-hmm. I said, he's the only one subbing for you. Mm-hmm. Why do you need to put him on payroll? I said, so what I did, people don't really realize in dealing with employers, you may have a salary of $50,000, but plus benefits and taxes, you really costing that employer about seventy, eighty thousand dollars mm-hmm. to be honest. People don't understand that. Mm-hmm. So I told him, he said, he said, well Stacy, this is what I do. If we do a job and I get three thousand from this job, I'll give him fifteen hundred. Because mm-hmm. they're journeymen. So, you know, he honoring that journeyman contract really when he really don't even have to. Mm-hmm. And he was really I think the guy really wanted him to look out for his taxes, Mm -hmm. the tax part of it. I said, but I'm going to tell you now. And so I printed him off a little uh, payroll scenario. I said, now, say you give him $1,500. Mm -hmm. I said, when they take out the taxes, he's going to get that, his net. But what you think happens to all that VICA, state, da-da-da? Okay, so what I need you to do you're going to have to get Ohio number, BWC number. You already got your EIN number. So you will to have to send all these monies to them. Mm. So the, the rule of thumb in payroll is your payroll is that, that 1500 uh-huh. plus 30%. Because he, as the employer, since he's W-2, he has to collect the taxes. He got to collect them. So, essentially, if I'm understanding this correctly, he shouldn't have gotten the 1500 It should have been minus the taxes, and then whatever was left over, he would give him that. But now, since he put him on payroll and gave him 1500 he has to now pay taxes on the 1500 Yeah, he would have had to do that, but he didn't. He 1099 this guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I told, I showed him the difference. What's the difference it, between the 1099 and the W-2 route? No taxes with the 1099. And an employer is not responsible for any taxes. Okay. And you, as the contractor, you in control of your own time. Okay. So he can say, okay, I need you. We got this job tomorrow as a 1099, and it starts at 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. He can say, well, I got something else to do. I can be there at 11. Uh-huh. He in control of his time. Mm-hmm. That's what an independent contractor is. They cannot tell you you have to be here from nine to five as a ten ninety nine, but mm-hmm. as a W two, mm-hmm. you need to clock in and be there at nine o'clock. Mm. So as a contractor, right, the person that's receiving the ten ninety nine. So to make it make it practical for the listeners, what's the best way for a 1099 are contracted to save for taxes. Is it like a percentage? Um, with my clients and I look and I would have to see their income, I can get you very close and you do estimated tax payments throughout the year. And the first, that's why here in October, the government closed and everybody hearing about this big shutdown. I'm here to tell y'all <laughs> the reason that is 
because the government year is closing. Their calendar year is October. Oh, yeah, because it ended, the calendar year ended, their fiscal year was September yeah. 29th or 30th. Right. Yeah. So that's why, and then we're going to start moving to the next one. So when you send in your estimated tax payments, that's why it goes from that, and it starts in April. Well, they do have, it ends in April, and it goes all the way down to September. That's why it does that. And I print out those vouchers. So I estimate you're going to owe, excuse me, four thousand. I'll put a thousand on each. I don't care. I can put a thousand on each voucher. You can send in one voucher for four thousand if you want to. Mm -hmm. I tell them. But long as you get that four thousand in there, or you get as close to it as you want, okay. as you can. Mm -hmm. But when you don't send any money in, mm -hmm. and you come see me. Uh -huh. And you owe, you have been sitting in a cab all year with the, with the meter the, running. With the meter running. That's as clear as I can put it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, now I want your meter running. Right. So I try to um, come as close to the tax liability. And that's what that is, the tax liability. So when doing that, that's basically like the, the penalties and fees that are being added on top of whatever it is that you owe. That you owe. Okay. Yes. Wow. So can you give us a success story throughout the last 16 years that you've been in business, whatever success story comes to mind? I just had one. Okay. And I had her put it on my web. Um, she's in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, she decided to do her own taxes. Okay. This is one of your clients. One of my clients. She okay. decided to do her own taxes. And, um, her and her husbands <laughs> and so when she came to me most people come to me they do not like the irs mm -hmm. i felt that yeah. okay okay <laughs> even if you say irs you you know people cringe mm -hmm. and um i said okay send me your documents she sent me her documents i said let me assess them you know i i know what you're saying but i, I don't tell anybody anything until i assess what I see. Mm -hmm. I had to mend two years of hers. Two, I had to amend two years of hers. Uh -huh. And um, so she was paying them $600 a month because she owed $18,000. Wow. And um, I sent them in. And, and usually when you do an amendment, they're not going to take it. They're going to send something back. I know that. Mm -hmm. And so the next year, we come in here to 2023, and we started this in 2022. Mm -hmm. I said, well, did you get a letter? She said, yeah, I didn't. I said, if you don't send me that letter. <laughs> so here in 2023, uh -huh. during tax season, she sent me the letter. I think it was towards the end, March or April. Plus, she sent me the current year taxes, plus the one – I amended, so I was dealing with two years with her. Mm -hmm. I said, just send it to me. So she sent it to me. I was sat down there. And I said, okay, I know what they need. I looked back in her files that I had for her, and I sent it on to the IRS, and I let her know I took a picture because she in Florida. I said, it's gone. Uh -huh. You know, I'm trying to ease her because I know she don't like them. Uh -huh. And um, I was sitting at home. Me and my daughter was watching TV, and um, – I'm not that type of person that always look at my phone, you know. The next day I know my phone ring. She said, Stacy. I said, yeah. She said, have you looked at your text? I said, no. She said, look at your text. And I looked. She said, God is so good. And she sent me a, um, she went on her account with the IRS and it said zero. So wait, wait, wait. She owed them 18000 Mm-hmm. Did she actually finish paying the four eighteen? No, after I amended, sending her oh, amendments, she owed zero. Wow. She said, I'm telling everybody about you. Wow. And I had two other calls from Florida since. But, yeah, she, she said, you are the bomb. I said, <laughs> yeah, and she was. It, she wasn't sleeping at night, and people do that. So I want to relieve that anxiety that people have. Mm -hmm. And I try to tell them, no, no, no. 
calm down. You know, uh, I'm going to walk you through this. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I even coach him with the say to the IRS agent, you know, how to speak the lingo. Uh -huh. You know, even if you don't know what you're talking about, I need you to say this. <laughs> You know, so I try to coach them. My goal is with all my clients that none of y'all owe. Or if you do owe, it ain't a comma. And my philosophy is I want them to owe me a comma, right. but I don't owe them a comma. <laughs> exactly. So I try to get the tax liability, if I'm in the know, as close as I can. Mm -hmm. As close as I can. And to be honest, I want them, you know, some of them don't care. Stacey, if I owe two hundred dollars, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want to get rid of that karma mm -hmm. and get as, like I said, as close as I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what are some setbacks that you've experienced in your business, and how did you overcome those setbacks? When everything don't go your way with taxes. Okay. Um, I had a payroll client. <clears throat> And the IRS sent them, we electronically filed their 941s, you know, with, well, everybody, the 941 is what goes wrong, goes along with employers' payroll taxes. Okay. Everybody depended on what, um, what I want to say, how your business, what business you're in, how they, how you pay that. Okay. And this business got a, a letter from the IRS and said they were changing their payment date. So I changed the payment date in the mm -hmm. payroll software. Uh -huh. Lo and behold, they said, oh, no, they start getting late payments, penalties. Mm -hmm. I said, what? And it happened after that? I called the IRS so quick, <laughs> and what happened was the computer had a glitch. It kept out one quarter. Mm. I said, well, that's not our fault. Exactly. I had to deal with the IRS uh -huh. and call them and get that removed from my client until I got it all removed. Wow. And you just have to, you just have to do it, and I feel they didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. Now. If I feel you don't deserve it and they're wrong with what I'm doing, I back for everybody. So why would you consider that a failure or a setback? Because I had to deal. For one, I didn't catch it. Oh, okay. And it's an ongoing thing. So when I, I paid them every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I don't when I filed them, so I had to count back. I'm like, how many more times I got to make this call? Uh -huh. I had to fix that. Uh -huh. You don't payroll is to the penny. Okay. Okay, payroll is to the penny. You don't. No, no, no. You know, and and in saying that, and and being a business owner, you learn stuff mm -hmm. from setbacks. Okay. You learn. You know. So is it easy for you to go into someone's business and set up their payroll process? So let's say, I'm just going to use myself as an example. I say, hey, you know, Stacy, I want to hire two people, right? I want to hire a part-time video editor and a virtual assistant. And I come to you and say, hey, I want to put them on payroll. What would I have, what documents or what would I have to put together to come to you and say, hey, can you make this happen for me? I got, I send all my clients a payroll packet. Okay. And on that packet, it got the EIN number. Um, you would know your quarterly because the IRS would tell you what you fall up under, and they do that by your amount. Um, and then I have a separate one if for your employees to fill out mm -hmm. and the direct deposit and all that. But it, it depends on your industry. Okay. How when your quarterly is due. Okay. That's how the IRS does it. In most agencies, they look at the industry you're in. Okay. And they look at your, they look at your payroll amount. Uh -huh. The IRS look at the amount. The state of Ohio, they more the industry. Uh -huh. But the IRS look at your amount. So if you got 50000 in payroll, mm -hmm. per payroll run, you pay at this time. 
you got 10000 per payroll run you pay at that time. Oh. That's how the IRS does it. Okay. So just any advice, whatever advice is, we've been sitting here having a great dialogue, great conversation. What type of advice would you give to, so I'm going to break this down in three ways. Aspiring entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs, and existing entrepreneurs when it comes to taxes and payroll. Aspiring, uh -huh. just do it. And get in contact with somebody. Get your EIN number Be with anything. Everybody, if you have an EIN number, they look at you like you're legit. Okay. And you don't want to come across like you're not sincere. So get that EIN number and your name, whatever your business name is, um, and the other reason you need that EIN number is to open up your business account. Um, if you need to, and I have one, you can get a P.O. box. Aspire and start now. Get that. Okay. And what was the second one? Uh, so new. So they already got everything set up. So they're a new entrepreneur. Yeah, you knew. And um, yet yeah, the, the same thing, if you... The P.O. box, some people use the P.O. box. You have that EIN. And you look, most um, every most structures I've seen is sole proprietor. Okay. And, um, and if you're just, how, how are you going to run it? Mm -hmm. and, and are you looking to grow or what you looking to do from here? Mm -hmm. Now, you in the business, what is your next step or... You're going to be working out your home. Are you written a booth? Are you written a space? Mm -hmm. All that play and part in there and, and what you want to do. Because I'm noticing a lot of people doing a couple things, mm -hmm. to be honest. I don't know. It, they're, they're, they're just not doing one thing. They're, mm -hmm. they're doing the hair and selling the products. Right, exactly. Uh huh. You know, you're seeing a lot of that. So, and that's two different businesses. Mm hmm and I had to break some down with that. So, and you get an understanding and know the structure that you want to do and stick with it. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, do it. Just do it. There is no nothing wrong with failing. If you don't succeed in that area, your niche may be in another area. And I, everybody I deal with, um, and wanting to do something. Um, that's what I tell them, dude, you find a niche, you know, where somebody lacking something mm -hmm. and that's what you do. So you used an analogy earlier. It was a, um, law enforcement analogy when you said, you know, the hesitation, the thought process. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. When you, if you got something that's come to you and you're, you're passionate about just just do it because if you sit down there and think about it and the other thing I learned is you can't tell everybody everybody don't have your dream or they don't see or they don't have your vision you know just do it don't sit down there and talk and answer yourself in your mind mm -hmm. Because you would talk yourself right out of it. Mm -hmm. You just get out there and do it. Right. You know, and you would think, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And well, if this happened, well, if all that is true mm -hmm. and you succeed, mm -hmm. you know, I, I got to try. Because I'm telling you, SP Payroll and Tax Services really could have came into fruition in my 20s, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I bagged back from it. Uh -huh. And and I, I often think about it, I'm like, maybe I wasn't ready then. Uh -huh. You know, maybe I wasn't ready then in my 20s. But people were asking me to do their taxes in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And I opened my business in my 30s. Okay. You know, and, um, and I just did it. You know, and don't wait because right now... And somebody said it so well. When you get up and do a nine to five, you help when somebody else fulfill their own dreams. Mm -hmm. right. You are. 
so right now is the time to do it in the day and age to do it all this technology mm -hmm. you can go somewhere and work a day and get paid today you can do your own shift mm -hmm. it's so much out there to do right now mm -hmm. do it so you said i know in, in law enforcement you said if you hesitate then something could go wrong somebody could get hurt Mm -hmm. when you said that earlier and I love that analogy because you said when you when you think about it you have to execute because if you delay the process then it might not happen if you delay the process you may talk yourself out of it did I get that right, right? or does that yeah, kind of sum you it up you said it right mm -hmm. okay so how do you stay up to date on trends as it relates to taxes because of course tax laws are always changing tax laws tax codes and there's so many I think I can't remember. I think there's over, what, four or 500 different tax codes? Yes, so much. And then they threw in the COVID stuff. So all the stuff, I got stuff coming at me all the time in my studies that I do. And um, then I got to take tests, exam. When the bank I partnered with, I got to go through their testing. And um, it's just everything that, that come. And when you're used to doing it, you know, and stay up to date. So before I even do, when I get the new tax software, like it's about to close out. And then I look over all, the, I get emails and alerts on all the new changes and stuff. And I go in there looking for myself. Okay. Do you ever take like any classes? Or are you required to take classes? Yeah. And, um, and you got, have so many CEUs, um, continuing education. Okay. And, um, but COVID changed. So only thing that changed in 2020 was when Biden brought in COVID in the middle of tax season. That was crazy. Mm -hmm. And now everything's reverting back. Okay. So people that didn't get the stimulus back then, they pretty much lost out on them now. They ran out. They closed it up. So you can't take advantage of it anymore is what you're saying. They closing that door on that because people that wasn't even required to file, that got Social Security, they were able to file then mm -hmm. and get those advanced child tax credits. Mm. See, now they can't do it. Okay. They took it away. So how do you, in your busy life, so you're into, you have the certification for health insurance or the license, payroll and taxes, how do you balance your business life and your personal life because I think that's the concern of a lot of entrepreneurs and small businesses some people you know say oh there's no such thing as you know work-life balance or business life balance how do you balance that between the two you just got to regroup all the time you may have to regroup more often you know it's just not no one time you got to balance you may have to balance ten times you know and do things um, it was more challenging for me when I had a toddler and my kids was in school. But I'm at that point now. My kid is older. Right. So it is better for me now. Okay. I don't have to go to school and pick them up. They driving. Right. <laughs> you know, she driving. And um, that was my challenging part. Um, I'm used to giving up my time. Okay. And so, but I... I know when to leave. I know when to put on my calendar and not go on vacation. Ah, uh, okay. I had to learn that over the years and, and balance that thing. Okay. You know, you you got to learn. I learned not to let anyone anxiety come on me. Mm -hmm. Because April 15th is here. <laughs> okay. Okay. We, we still going to get this done. Absolutely. You know. I had to learn that, uh -huh. you know, and and I'm going to tell you, it, it, during the peak, they considered the peak like February where everybody should have AW2s. My brain just goes. Uh -huh. I'll be laying in the bed going, did I file that? Uh -huh. You know, I have times like that, like, oh, and I'm still calculating. I'm, I'll be like, stop, stop, stop. Numbers just flowing. Yeah, my number, <laughs> you know, they keep going. Or I may be thinking about a tax situation. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to double check this. Mm -hmm. So I go through things like that. 
So even when you were younger and you had, you know, when your kids were younger, how did you balance that? Because right now there are entrepreneurs, there are listeners who's like, man, I want to start my business, but I have smaller kids. So because I'm pretty sure exactly what you did back then, you have to do the same thing now because some things you can't just change with technology, like how to balance, you know, your business and taking your child to daycare or picking them up from school. So how did you do that? I had family that helped. Um, I took advantage of aftercare with school, so that gave me another hour or something on the tail end because I had them in aftercare. Okay. Um, that would help me. So, and I had family, so my sister would pick them up sometimes, or their dad would pick them up. Okay. So I would balance something like that. And I just, like I said, you just do it. And it just turned in all these years. But that's what I truly did. And during tax season, and, and my girls, excuse me, they were in the sports. Mm, okay. So we had a sports thing going on. Uh -huh. Now you're making me tired. I'm thinking about all the stuff I did. <laughs> <laughs> right, but that's a good thing. Because, yeah. again, there are, you know, either single mothers or if they are in a relationship or married and they have children, you know, spouse at work all the time. So, and they still have dreams, you know, things yeah. that they want to accomplish. And they're like, man, how am I going to accomplish this? What do, what do I need to do? So is there any other advice, any other gems, any other golden nuggets you want to share before we come to a close? Uh -huh. I would say, um, just do it. Um, just do it. And nobody is going to believe in you like you believe in you. And whatever vision you have, write it down. Write it down and, and make it plain. And um, have a goal to fulfill that position and, and to reach that goal. I had read a story you know, I seen a, a thing on my LinkedIn. This young lady was starting her business. Uh -huh. And she got called <clears throat> for a W-2 job. Mm -hmm. So she put her business on hold, went working for this W-2 job, and they let her go in nine months. Oh, wow. And she was very upset. Mm -hmm. and, she, and so she fussed at herself mm -hmm. for putting her own dreams on the back burner. You know, and that's why I say, go ahead and do it, you know, and if you have to have a part time gig or you got another source of income in the house, good, but but do it and you will be happy. In the end, mm -hmm. you, you will, you will be happy in all these years. I've enjoyed the freedom that I have. OK. I do. I enjoy the freedom and being on my time. This, this, nope, I can do this. Nope, I can't do that. You know, and I'm going to tell you one other thing. When you go in business, you're not going to click with everybody. Mm -hmm. People don't really realize that. You're not going to click with everybody. Um, when you say click with everybody, you're referring yeah. to like your clients? Or yeah, employees? with your clients. Everybody... It's not going to want your, you know, you're not going to jive with everybody. Um, you're going to run into some problem people. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to know how to deal with those problem people. I did a webinar at the beginning of my business. And this guy said, when you have a problem person at the beginning, they will be a problem all the way through. And I, that stayed in the back of my mind and in the front of my mind the whole time. And it has come true. You know, and some people I have turned down and not done their taxes. Mm -hmm. I have because, you know, you don't click. I have some people come in my office and tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. So you will run into some people like that, you know, so and you just have to nicely deal with them. So going into business for yourself is not all happy days all the time. Mm -hmm. You will have some bad days, and you just got to know how to handle them. Okay. And you will see 
in your business as you grow, you will mature along too with your business. All right. So you're giving a lot of gems, a lot of golden nuggets. I believe there are a lot of aspiring new and existing entrepreneurs and small businesses that could take advantage of the knowledge that you've given us. So at this point, um, how do they contact you for health, you know, health services or health care, payroll services, tax services? Uh, I can be reached at 614-203-5134, and that's my cell phone. And my website is www.sptaxes.com. All right. Well, there you have it. A lot of knowledge, a lot of gems from SP, payroll, and tax services. And hey, we want to thank you for joining the Let's Evolve for Tomorrow podcast, where we help aspiring new and existing entrepreneurs excel to the next level by inviting other entrepreneurs onto the podcast to give knowledge and gems and tell you how to overcome some of those challenges. We'll see you next time.